Professor Skidmore mentioned, I'm Michael Hoyt. Um, similar to Will earlier, this is a capstone project from last fall. Um, and I chose a very recent, at the time, and still um, a, very, a very modern topic, um, which was interesting. So I used, I used two theories um, to use as um, approaches to this case study. Um, and it was still kind of developing as I wrote this, um, and things have developed since then. So it's, it's interesting to still kind of keep in mind for me. Um, so I wrote about the humanitarian crisis or the immigration surge this past summer of Central American immigrants. Um, it's just really quick background, first of all. The crisis, this 70,000 unaccompanied minors um, from Central America, almost 70,000, spans from kind of the end of October of 2013 until end of summer of, of, last, of last summer. Um, the countries that they come from are, it's called the Northern Triangle, I guess I have a map next to so it. It's Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. So if you can imagine that, it's some sort of a triangle, I guess. Um, and this is, this is, um, to, this is the Border Patrol apprehension data. And so you can see the cities where most of these children um, originate from. So as you can see, Honduras is actually, um, of non-war-torn countries right now, is the murder capital of the world. Um, the capital of the Gusgado is right there, but San Pedro Sula is the most dangerous city in the world right now. Um, and so this, this is where these kids come from and travel through Mexico. Um, in the context that they come from, there's three kind of main issues that they're fleeing from. One is just violence, um, mostly related to street gangs. Um, the, there's two main gangs operating in all three countries. Um, next, just, just poverty, um, crushing poverty. And, and thirdly, uh, corruption, and just a real lack of, of institutional safety net to catch them um, and to operate within those countries. So due to the kind of the unique, uniqueness and the um, extent of these three um, uh, ways to describe the context, um, there's really kind of a debate that stems uh, that comes from that, uh, whether they're immigrants or whether we can treat them as refugees, and how do you define them? That's that. So that was the first thing. So my argument I make is whether they're refugees or immigrants first, and then I go on to, to explore how realism and constructivism can kind of perceive migration, um, international, transnational migration. Um, and how they would interpret the U.S. action so far. So firstly, I make an argument that these are refugees, um, first of all, that um, the children are something unique, and, and not only is it just due to the three, the extent of the three issues that I mentioned, of the, the violence, the corruption, the poverty that they come from, um, but also I focus on the fact that they are children, they're minors, um, mostly, mostly not even teenagers, the, the ages has dropped, um, average age. And also I kind of make a historical argument where, in a sense, essentially, we owe this to them based on the history and, and, and that the US kind of created the context in which they were born into, uh, which I won't go too into depth with right now, but I mean, if you look at Guatemala, you look at El Salvador and the, the civil wars that, you know, in, in Guatemala was three and a half decades long. Um, El Salvador was also an extended civil war in which there were groups, belligerent groups that were funded by the US. Um, Honduras in 2009, there was a, there was a coup which the president was ousted, and since then, and that was kind of tacitly accepted and supported by the U.S. And since then, um, they have deteriorated even, even further, just fallen into utter institutional failure. Um, and then, if you look at kind of the biggest reason why they should be considered refugees, is the the fear for their lives that they they experience due to gang violence. And you look where the gangs come from. Well, they developed in L.A. due to Salvadoran. Um, immigrants that, that fled the war that was sponsored by the U.S. and then due to haphazard immigration policies, they, they are kind of arbitrarily placed together in the same locations when they're deported, um, which further um, further kind of uh, forge uh, rivalries and, and violence in the region. And those two uh, groups, um, the MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang, um, both of those operate for all three countries now. So when we move on to to take a step back from that kind of moral argument, we look at a realism in migration versus constructivism in migration. So these are two kind of basic um, theories of international relations, so I won't go too into depth with that. Um, but realism, you think of, of rational state actors within this world of anarchy. Um, and so there, there's definitely an importance placed on the nation state, and it's kind of due to the anarchy of the, of the international system. It's a, it's a context of, of, distrust, of distrust, I guess. So in terms of migration, especially in post 9-11, migration in this era of globalization, um, there's an emphasis placed on sovereignty and kind of reaffirming, reestablishing that sovereignty, that territoriality. And ways that you can do that is by securitization and militarization, these acts that exclude people. So you're building up borders. Um, 
So the U.S., for example, and this is in a lot of Western countries, but in the U.S., for example, that may just be an arbitrary 2,000-mile uh, line in sand, but it, it is meaning-making and meaning-caring, and, and it really stands as a symbol, and it's kind of a realist approach to, to reaffirming um, and kind of dividing countries and a backlash to this transnational uh, flow of people that happens in, in modern times. It's happened forever, but um, it's been accelerated in modern times. So you see things like Operation Gatekeeper in San Diego, um, Operation Hold the Line in El Paso, Operation Safeguard in Tucson, they come up with great names for these. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's kind of militarizing, you can, you know, you've got drones, um, we try to construct a, a virtual fence, um, different ATVs, different gadgets and technology in this area. That's a very realist approach um, to reaffirming that, that territory. Um, constructivism relies more on kind of ideas, identity, um, norms in international and domestic um, spheres, and that can influence uh, state behavior in international um, relations. So in terms of migration, if there are already kind of enclaves, groups of immigrants who have come previously, uh, then the ideas that, that they forge um, can really influence state behavior, as well as what is the identity of the people that come. So whether they're immigrants, whether they're refugees, that affects how we think and, and how we act as a state in response. And then kind of these, these salient ideas of morality, through constructivism you can see that as more guiding what behavior, what state response you're gonna have. So my findings, uh, the US response to this, uh, this surge is really kind of convoluted and it's not straightforward. So in my mind that, that references constructivism, that stands as constructivist because there's these different ideas that are competing. Um, so in a sense you can have realist um, conceptions within, within constructivism because the idea of realism um, Plays a, plays a role in the U.S. response. So just to go through some of the things uh, that the U.S. did immediately as a response, uh, first we sent President Joe Biden to all three countries, uh, kind of on a speaking tour, essentially telling them, do not come, please do not come to the U.S. Um, at the same time, there's a propaganda campaign, um, and this is kind of incredible, but the Border Patrol, and this is not the first time they've done this, but they produced their own song, a corrido, uh, which is kind of a Mexican style song that you would hear in like, a Mexican restaurant that tells the tale of Pancho Villa or something. Um, there was a migra career, and so they produced a hit called La Bestia, which means the beast, which is the train that is well documented that the students, or that the children um, oftentimes ride through southern Mexico um, to get to the U.S. And the song that they produced um, had these lyrics about, don't let your children come um, to this train, they will die. The children don't have any funny ideas about doing this, it's not worth it. Um, and it actually topped the charts in Central America and Mexico uh, for some time this summer. Um, didn't have much influence on, on the actual act of, of immigrating. So takeaways from that are they can produce a great song board patrol can, but it's um, not very successful um, in terms of actually curbing immigration. And then finally there was dialogue with Central American leaders um, as well as an aid package. Um, additional aid has been uh, requested by um, President Obama three times, but um, so far we will see where that goes. Um, and Central American leaders met and and DC along with the foreign, uh, foreign ministers of those countries. And then the Wilberforce Act was upheld. This was, uh, the Wilberforce Act uh, was suggested to be revoked um, into, um, immediately after uh, the surge, which to me is kind of one of the most outrageous um, elements of the response. Um, this is a 2007 act, uh, which was just signed into law by uh, President George Bush and essentially, ostensibly, it's supposed to combat against uh, trafficking of children. Um, so if you're from a country, if you're a minor who arrives unaccompanied to this country as an immigrant, um, and you don't border the country, so you're not from Canada or Mexico, then you have to have uh, proper legal, uh, pres legal proceedings and, um, and due process. Uh, and so that was upheld, but yet the Obama administration elected to, to have these proceedings expedited. So they do receive some legal uh, representation, um, or due process in some sense, but they've been expedited because the immigration courts are so flooded uh, with cases. Um, and so, it, so at Sonia Nasario, the, the Pulitzer Prize winning author who was written about um, a Honduran boy um, who kind of took this track years ago, so this is not a new issue, it's just the amount of kids that are coming now. Um, she described it as, yeah, we realize that there is due process that's necessary, but we've kind of given them sham process and not due process, because it's so expedited, and so few kids get real, true legal representation. 
So then, um, in my findings, I can also see that there's realist values within that constructivist culture, uh, constructivist kind of structure or paradigm, which I alluded to earlier. Um, so I guess I could skip ahead to talk about executive action. So that is uh, a direct response, I think, um, and spurred by this, uh, this surge, this humanitarian crisis. And so that's very constructivist to me, that groups identity, uh, groups that have immigrant identity or they are advocates of, of pro-immigration um, rights for immigrants, they, they really pushed that this executive ha action would happen, although it had been um, in the works and in some capacity immigration reform had been a promise in the campaign of the Obama administration, right? Um, but this event really spurred that um, and brought it to the stage, and that's where it kind of comes from. But then you listen, you listen to kind of the rhetoric, and I was well into this paper when, some, uh, when this executive action happened, so um, kind of threw a wrench in everything that I was studying at the time and writing about. But you listen, you listen to kind of the, the rhetoric that Obama used in that late November night, um, where he would follow a statement about uh, you know something supporting a. Um, the idea of a hardworking immigrant um, in the U.S. and he would follow that with, well, but we have to shut down the border. We need to militarize it, fund the border patrol more, um, and reassert that you know our our territory should be uh, respected. And that kind of raised the question of, well, who's coming in right now? They're refugees coming in, as I've argued. Um, so that so, in one sense, he he was trying he further politicized an issue of clear refugee uh, children while trying to while trying to support his pro-immigration. Um, action. So it's very convoluted and, and it shows that the realist voices in the U.S. really do hold some weight um, in addition to um, kind of more moral arguments. And so both were weighing on him as he made this action, which really is, is constructivist in nature. So further, um, you, have to, you have to reference that there are limits to executive action since this is I'm looking at it internationally. That's really focused on domestic, um, a domestic sphere. Um, where these are, these are people, that the five million immigrants that have already lived here that are not refugees. The refugees are not referenced in, in the executive action. So that problem still has gone um, unaddressed, really. Um, and then to the extent of dedication, uh, securitization or image making, that's kind of the realist um, idea that I talked about. I, I referenced the feminist thinker Judith Butler in here where she talks about performativity, where you, per, you are performing the border, you're establishing that border. Um, and the idea that that is, is so important to the United States um, when you have children who now are many times not even teenagers yet um, fleeing death threats from, from gangs and, and violence and poverty. Um, and that's not enough to, to absolutely um, overcome this idea. That raises a lot of questions. And so moving forward, that um, maybe some reevaluation would be necessary. Um, and then finally, as the crisis ended, this would be something that I haven't addressed quite so much in the paper because I wrote it last semester. Um, but not necessarily, no. Uh, if we look at the countries, it's not in the news as much anymore, but if we look at the three countries, um, in the past month, El Salvador had the most violent month in the past 10 years. Uh, Honduras remains the murder capital of the world. Venezuela is contending, but still the murder capital of the world. Um, if you look at the children, where are they now? They're in the news as much. Well, we have 83 detention centers now on the border, in the borderlands. Most of them are, are still detained there, waiting to be released or waiting to get their expedited um, deportation proceedings. And so many of them have been deported um, if they have gone through the systems. Um, so, so that leaves them in Central America and likely trying to come back again. Um, and so when you've kind of got all of these uh, factors in place, they're, they are still arriving, and now we're, now we're actually funding Mexico to deport them. Um, Mexico has deported exponentially more uh, immigrants this year than last year, because um, it's funded by the US, uh, which is frightening as well because of the corruption and, and horror stories uh, with the Mexican police as well, which has been in the news as well. Um, so I think moving forward, no, this crisis, re crisis really has not ended. And by, by focusing on kind of the image making and the militarization of the border, and domestic concerns with immigration, um, that the roots, the roots are not being addressed at all within Central America. Um, some aid has been proposed, but uh, the true roots haven't been, and where deterrence should happen in, in the countries themselves and building up the countries and their infrastructure rather than deterring at the border itself um, and still making them go throughout that, that uh, perilous journey um, to get there. So not only will this, not only will this uh, topic remain relevant, but it will remain urgent, because these are children who are clearly refugees 
um, in this in this statement. So I guess this this piece is this paper is a call to mobilization in a constructivist uh, manner to go further um, in pro-immigration um, rhetoric, further than just domestic and immigrants immigrants that have been here. But this is about refugees, and so using a constructivist paradigm, people can force action upon this. So moving forward, that is the, the lesson. Thank you.